Okay, so we supposed to talk about this on last week, but then we are a little bit behind. But it's important to, I want to make sure everybody have a good idea about each chapter. So I would rather a little bit slow rather than try to hurry. Okay, so do anybody know what we need to talk about memory? This chapter, so I put, I put memory as a third chapter, okay? Because for a lot of you, maybe you have your midterm exam coming, right? I don't think I, I don't have a midterm exam for you. I have a final exam for you, okay? So, um, but still, memory is very important, right? But why? Why we need to worry about memory? Anybody tell me how important to, to, to have a good memory? How many of you actually believe you have very good memory? Wow, God bless you, <laughs> so good. So what good memory helping you? To remember memory the things, right? And then when you remember the thing, make you feel what? Feel good, right? It's where, uh, 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 it's very hard. Eh? The things not coming, right? Okay, who else say your good memory? Okay, what good memory do to you? Right. So then, oh, when you see people, you can call their name. You feel good. Make feel connection. You know, it is rather than say, hey, you, I think you, but then I don't remember you, right? Okay, so what memory actually means in terms of definition? Okay, so before we get to definition, let's aware. No matter how good your memory, actually they never be perfect. Reconstructing the past. No matter how hard you try, don't don't feel disappointed if you recall something and somebody say, that's not actually not 100% true. It's okay, because our human beings memory not like a video tape. We can, we, we cannot, just like when I recall this class, if I go home, watch the exact same as the one we have in the class. But if I don't let you watch video, I just have you recall then you too may have different story, right? You may tell, just me say, really, if she said that, I don't remember, right? And then, then let's watch video. Oh, oh, yeah, right? And so that's our human nature. Okay, so let's look at the, the definition of memory. Memory is refer, okay, actually I may be, Good idea, I will let you say, like last time. What is the word here? You think it's, it's part of memory? Retrieve information. What's retrieve mean? Bring back. But before you retrieve the memory, actually you need a what? You need a what? You need to retain. You need to put it. Then you have something to bring up, right? If you never retain, then you will say, oh, "Why I don't remember?" Of course, you don't remember. You never, you never, never put that information in your mind, in your in your brain, right? So it's important to have a two, and we all have that capacity. We all have that capacity. We have the ability. Good morning. Good morning. We all have the ability to, we all have the ability to put in and then to recall. We all have the ability. Okay. And then we all has we also have ability, you know, to restructure that come for this. So we can also restructure. You know, so sometimes you may remember A and C, and then for some reason you can put B together by yourself. You know, you try to tell your, 
<coughs> your parent tell ask you about your school, okay? And then you tell your parents this, 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 this. And maybe some piece you're not 100% sure, but then you can put together, okay? And <coughs> that's the good part for human being can be horrible part. <laughs> People can make a story totally different way. Different way. Sometimes it's not intention. It's different from your intention, make up story. You really believe so. Okay, so actually, some psychologists say, when you are helping your client, okay, when you are helping people, ask them about the past experience. How true, actually, is not important. Most important is what they are feeling. Okay, because the reason they hurt them, hurt them, because they're feeling. It's not because that true. Right, for example, you know, some kids maybe say, I got abused. I have an abusive family. Okay, and the parent may say, we didn't abuse you. But the kids, for some reason, they feel hurt. And they hurt make them become depressed. Or they hurt him, make them trauma. It's not necessarily what you do, it's more what they get. It. Okay, so, because knowing the vulnerability for humans' memory is, we, we are not video. Okay, we are not video. Right now, easier because what? Because we, everybody have a cell phone. Everybody can recall something. But think about when you were very, very, very young. Your parents may not able to recall everything, right? How many of you actually in the future, you are going to recall everything about your kids? The first step, first words, right? And you take picture. Right now I see a lot of my former students, they get married and they, they start to pregnant and they say one month, two months, three months, four months, you know? And then when the baby comes, they have one month, two months, three months, four months, right? Right, and then first step, first one, right? So then their kids in the future will know their life more, but that's not mean they remember. In your young, young, young age, you may know a lot of stuff, but not really from memory, it's from picture. Right, I just ask my, my daughter, because when we first arrived in America, I'm in Wisconsin, she just one year old. And then she didn't remember any. I said, how much do you remember? She said, I, I said, do you remember your nanny? Do you remember this? She said, Ma, I didn't remember anything, but I kind of know because from your picture, from the picture. I said, when you start to remember, she said, about three years old. So we, we went to Wisconsin for one, one and a half year, then we moved to Mississippi for a PhD. And then so she's in that time, she just didn't know the first part of Mississippi until she's three years old and she says she have a nine, a bad dream and then start to remember the star. How old when you start to remember the star? In what age? Anybody? Anybody? One? You're three? Three? Okay, any other? Four? Okay. And? What age do you remember? Huh? Three. Three? Huh? Three. three. But how do you know it's three? How do you know that time called three years old? <laughs> For some reason, you know, maybe you're three years old birthday, right? Okay, so you can see. What can we do before the three? You can abuse them. They don't remember anything, right? No, according to Freud, your body remember. Your unconscious remember. Even you cannot say it, but you maybe remember. Okay, so according to Freud, don't abuse your kid just because they don't remember. They remember. Their body remember. Okay, so when we say uh, we have the ability to structure the memory, we talk about the manufacture of memory. Okay, manufacture, that means we are not like 
videotape. We are not able to remember exactly, okay? Because when we are remembering, we are highly selective. We pick and choose. We pick and choose. We, you may be pick choose the funny story your teacher say to remember, and then your teacher say something you don't understand until you will not remember. Okay, or if some if that moment you know you don't think that part of anything to do with you, then you don't remember, right? And also we reconstruct it. Even we remember, but we put something based on our own experience and put in. And then also we draw from many sources. Okay, so we call source mistribution can occur. That means you get so many, you get this from so many resources. So you are not sure if the memory is from where, from where. You just know, huh, kind of, I kind of think that, but I'm not sure it's from where, okay? Or is that happened to your brother or you, right? Okay, so that is a, so you can see, you know, uh, sometimes from television, sometimes from family story, sometimes from home video, sometimes from picture, some is from direct collection. So everything there is from so many different places. It's interesting, right? Our human beings, very, very, very interesting. Okay. So, that word's called flashball memory. Flashball memory means something happened. They are so huge. They are so traumatizing. Okay. So, for example, we say September 11, 911. It's, we can call it a fresh bone memory. But where are you? Are you, anybody, how old are you? When that, you're not even born yet? You're not even born yet? 911? September 11, really? Is that 2000 what? 2001. 2001, and when you was born? 2001. 2002, and then you thought 2001. And so none of you actually experienced that. All right? And so for the people a little bit older than you, that is traumatizing. It's a big event. But when you learn that, from where? from teacher, because some, every time we get to September 11, when they talk about it, but for you just, huh, right? Okay, so for you, what kind of event in your, in your generation consider as fresh for memory? Yes? Chris Brown and Rihanna. Huh? Chris Brown and Rihanna. Okay, that for you is a fresh for memory. You're this generation, right? This generation. And also, our generation now, we share the same thing. It's called coronavirus. Coronavirus, right? This may be now fresh book, but this has been so long. Already many, many months. I don't know how long they will take, right? Now, before, I'm much older than you, but we never have an event like this that Everybody, the whole world encounter the same virus. And the whole world have to wear the mask together. So this may be, in our time, it's big. So now, all the video we record is everybody wear a mask. And if that 10 years later, when you look at this, you may say, oh, uh-huh. But the feeling mark may be not as strong. But now it's strong because you know you only you you only allowed to go to class once per week. Okay, you only allowed to 
you're not allowed to, to sit there and watch football. Right? Right? That's a big deal for many people, right? And I heard like in Columbus, in Columbus that all the hotel around Columbus Day, you know, they, they are so worried. Because they don't have football game, no fans come, and then how do they make money? Right? So that fresh ball memory. But here say even it's called fresh ball memory. Still, people still not able to remember 100%. Even the things so trauma. Okay. The good thing for this, what can be good thing for this not able to remember? What is the good if we want to think about positive way? That's called time is healing. Time can heal. And when we say time can heal, one of the reasons because we start to forget. Right? And that's a good thing. Because we don't have that energy to carry all life trauma for all the life, then we were never happy. So for example, if unfortunately you one of the class you was failed in one of the class. You may be trauma, you may be cry, you may be saying my life is over. But when the time start to pass and start to pass, start to pass, you start able to talk about. And then the first time you talk about you may be still crying. The next time you are less crying and then gradually, gradually you find the meaning, then you take that as a as a step stone for you in another life. Right? So Memory is a good thing, but then another blessing is forgetting. But of course, you don't want those forgetting is you like old timer. That that is a disease, right? You don't want to see people; they no longer remember who you are. They are very hurt, right? Okay. So we say the miniature of memory. Okay. So now here we we already talk about you know something very. Um, special, okay, unusual, you know, they will hold a special place in memory, and yet, still, they are not able to become recall 100% accurately over the time, okay, and then also, people remember, you know, something, actually, you remember emotion, you know, sometimes you not only remember event, you remember feeling. Or sometimes you remember feeling, you don't remember the event. How many of you actually very good with remember the feeling? Emotion. You remember emotion. So when you are writing, and you say you like music too, right? You will use the emotion, right? When you write in music, did you use emotion? More than the, the, the event, right? Remember that by that emotion. Who else like you remember emotion more? The feeling. Okay. Brendan, now you remember event or you remember emotion. So that example, if you go to a, 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 you went to vacation, right? And then you will more like remember the vacation more if you have very strong emotion during no time. You're so happy or so angry or something. If something just, uh, uh, uh. That's why students don't remember the class that much because they're pretty much the same. You come to class, you finish, you go. You come to class, you finish, you go. You don't remember. But it happened in the class, you fail. Or you get the best. Or you something trauma or something too exciting, then you remember, right? Okay, and then, but no matter what they will say, we start to forget some. We start to forget some. Okay, now. Here, I think that pretty much. Okay, now here. Make, make sure you remember this the definition. Source misattribution, that's a mean you are the of inability to distinguish information stored during an event is from where? It's from you are not able to see the difference from the information store is from original or from something you ate in later. You're not sure. You don't remember. You don't really know where they're from. 
Okay, so this is called source misattribution because we are going to have another term very similar to this term. So make sure you remember this one is you are confused about who is the resource. Okay, source distribution. Okay, got that? Got that? Okay. Okay, now this is another term. That's why I say that this term called confabulation. Okay, confabulation is you don't remember is this happened to you or happened to somebody else? Okay, confabulation, confabulation. So here, say, I went to suffering at sunrise when we took a family trip to California, but actually it's not you, it's actually you watch somebody. Okay, so actually the truth is you watch other people serve at sunrise when you took a family trip to California. You thought that you, actually it happened to somebody else. And confabulation is you confuse. You now remember it that happened to you, or remember because you see something happen to other people. Okay? Okay. And this is special for little kids. For little kids, they, they're still not able to, to have a good distinguish. So then they may say, Oh, I got a four years birthday, so exciting. And then your mom say, Honey. It's your brother, <laughs> not you. That's your brother, it's not you. Okay, and this called what? Confabulation. How about mis misattribution? Source misattribution is what? It's all you. You just don't remember it's really original you, all from picture, all from video. Okay? But confabulation is you actually it's not you, it's somebody. Okay. So for example, some people may recall they have been lost in a big shopping mall. And they are so traumatized. But actually it's actually it's not from them. It's just a story they have been heard so much and they thought that's them. That's them. Okay. How anybody you watch you have been watching home alone? Did you ever worry you may be the one lost? Right? So of course the movie, but possible like anybody have been lost in the shopping mall? You went with the parents and then you cannot find them? Never? Then you guys are good. You do? When? And how? Yeah. Yeah, and then do you remember your feeling? Confused. Confused. And how do your friends find you? They eventually come back. They eventually just don't move. Mm -hmm. The problem if you keep moving and they keep moving, right? But good thing right now we all have that phone we call cell phone, right? But you know that little kids carry cell phone, you know. And then in my time we don't have cell phone. So you need actually you need to go to the front desk and they have to announce. Brendan, your parents try to find you. <laughs> Please stay there, they are come to get you. <laughs> right. Right? So that announcement is so important before. And right now we have cell phone. So bring cell phone everywhere. Right? Did you have cell phone everywhere? Every second with you? You don't? Of course, right now your parents cannot find you because you are in the class, right? Because they are, you are in the class, right? But now technology. I wish we have a, right now you can find your car, right? Push your button, right? Right? I wish the key can have that. Because sometimes you cannot find the key. So did you put the something you can find your key? Right? I hope they can sing for you, right? Right? And then sometimes some stuff, just a piece of paper cannot find that, right? Okay, but anyway, we all have that, that trouble. Okay, now, when configuration more like to happen? Okay, we're all so bright here, right? Okay, when, when configuration maybe take place? Okay, first of all, is if you have thought 
heard and told others about the event many, many, many times. You keep telling the story many, many times. That become part of their life. Okay? Or, okay, are you guys done with this one? Okay? Secondly, you have been imagined so detailed about what's going on that you feel so real. Right? Or, the event is easy to imagine. Very easy to imagine. Right? Then you start to get traumatized because you have been thinking about so much. Okay, so if you are the actor, that's why they say, if you in the future you want to have a good job, be a psychologist, go to Hollywood to be a psychologist there because all the movie stars can be confused. Because what? When they are acting, don't you think they have to think about it for their role, the, the, the job they are going to do? And then don't they need to feel it? And then don't they need to be image? And then if they're acting so many different roles and for all the sometimes they'll confuse, is the real me? Is the real me or that's not real me? Is the acting me or real me? So actually, when you finish acting, they need to have a, a, a time to remove that remove that role before you walk to the real world. Otherwise you are carrying that emotion with you. And then when you go out, you will be like very, 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 very confused, right? Okay, is anybody actually right now, you are in some kind of role, you require you to be a person that's not really you. For example, you are the, you are the, uh, you work in a, in a, in a, in a reception desk. And you have to be like, very nice to everybody all the time. And that's not really you. And you just act in that way. We call that called emotion work. Okay, emotion work. I just say, you have to act in that way. Okay, think about flight attendants, right? Flight attendants, they have to be all the time. Like when I do the international flight, you know, like 14 hours. They have to be all very nice in the 14 hours. Right? And they, even they are very tired, just like you but they have to act in very energetic, right? And they can be confused. So they, they may be confused about who I am really am, like, you know, who am I, you know? And so that because they, they twist their memory to something not, that, not their own life. Okay, now, we say memory is not trustworthy, actually, but then we use eyes, eyewitness you know, in the court, it's one of important, important wisdoms, one of important evidence to recognize the suspect, right? And, but we say it's not always reliable, not always reliable, right? How many of you will be in criminal justice? Okay. So what can we do if this is not reliable? How do you trust? If that, that's why they have a call Innocent Project right now. They are non-profit, you know, and they helping, you know, those, you know, criminal, actually they never buy them any crime. But sometimes they take them, what, 20 years, 30 years? get out, right? And because people identify them as criminal and then they have no other, other evidence, right? Okay, especially what? Especially if they are different ethnicity, different ethnicity, you know, because people in different ethnicity, they are different. Like before I come to America, I don't really know, they have such thing called different eye color. Right? 
people here have different eye color, right? Some is a little bit brown, a little bit blue. You know, in my country, pretty much everybody have same color, the eye color. So I, the little kids, if they need to identify people from different ethnicity, they may not able to tell that part because they never pay attention to that part, right? Never pay attention to that part. Or if you give them the leading words, for example, you ask, if you ask smash or you ask hit, okay, your leading word can take them to their evidence. Or you are leading more, you say, really, right? Your father really abused you, right? If you keep saying this way, the little kids will keep saying, mm hmm, mm hmm, right? Because you are leading them for them to believe that's happened, okay? So, so you can see it's not actually accurate, not actually reliable. But before we can find it any other way, you know, looks like this is also one of the way that criminal justice field use a lot, okay, to find the suspect, to do the line up, right? In line up, which one identify, right? One or three, right? Okay, and then we say misleading information. I will talk about that. Okay, so that is the is the uh, the reason. Okay, so. Look at these pictures, okay. So, for example, the original, maybe it looks like this. Maybe original person looks like this. But then, since nobody knows who is that person, so you start asking people, and they start giving you information, and then after those information, they come out like this. They come out like this, right? So then when you try to find a suspect, you, you are looking for, you know, person looks like this and try to find the you know this person and to, to arrest them. And but they are totally different people. Totally different people. See the hair, you know, curly and the the <coughs> eyeglasses is different shape. Even nose looks different. Even the mouth they looks different. Looks different, right? And so you can see it's hard. It's hard to to really recall 100%. One time, uh, my, my son and we, we, we drove the car, and then one lady beside us, actually we are in the turning lane, turning lane. she is not, but she turned and hit our car, okay? And the po police come and then, you know, give her a ticket, but then she sued us. She said, no, she didn't really turn. So then we have to go to the court and then the police even say, that story say, you know, she's, she's in the turning then not us. You know, and then we have to draw the pictures. You know. So when that things happen, I told my son, let's write down everything right now. You know, we didn't know she's going to sue us, but good thing we write down. So when we go there, we can draw the picture, say what happened, what happened, okay? But it's so scary. I don't want that to happen again, okay? It's so scary. Okay, so then we hear say, especially the little kids, okay? For adult, maybe we have more language, we have more words to describe, okay? Maybe it will be more accurate. But for little kids, actually, they say, you know, they remember, but then they also very vulnerable for the suggestion. Okay, they remember, but the problem is the way they can describe. They may not have enough language to describe. For example, when I knew in this country, even now, you know, some some language you guys use daily, I may never have chance to ex explore those language then I may not know how to describe, okay? And also, uh, they are respond to, you know, bias interview by adult, okay? So if adult won't take them to the one direction, 
then they they pretty much follow. Okay, and also you know when you ask them question, you know between fantasy and reality, they may become confused. Like, what what really happening? Okay, and then also leading question, to what other kids have you know supposed to say? You know they will say, okay, I'm the kid. Maybe I should say this way. And then uh, praise for making false allegation. You know, so then all this make the kids' testimony is very, 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 very vulnerable. Okay, and so kids actually in different age, their vulnerability is different. The older they got, they were less vulnerable than the younger one. Okay. 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 So. Okay, so there's just some, you know, some example here. You know, you prove all and disprove and encourage them that, that just here. Okay, I don't think you need to write this. Okay, then here, show, did you see this? Compare three, four, five, six years old. Okay, you may find that the yellow one is leading question plus inference technique. See, they are very vulnerable for age three. Okay, they are better for a four, and then five, and then for some reason six is up a little bit. But you can see, <clears throat> in general, three years old is very vulnerable. Very vulnerable for leading question, also very vulnerable for leading question plus inference technique. Right, so it's, that's, see, see a lot of you just say you start to remember things at age three. So still very fragile in that in that in your, your ability for memory. Okay, so now let's talk about how do we pursue memory. How do you know you are remember? How do we know? Okay, so two kind of memory. What we call explicit memory. That's a conscious, intentional recollection of event or item of information. For example, I said, okay, we have exam. Okay, will be in class exam, no notes, nothing. Okay, then you what? You are consciously, intentionally memorize those information, and then sit here, consciously, in, intentionally recall those information. Right, that's called explicit memory. Implicit memory is just unconscious retention. Like when we are chatting, when you are chatting, you start to tell your friend about some psychology stuff you learned in the class, you know, and then you're not intentional to recall anything. It just comes to your mind, okay? And that's called implicit memory, okay? And then actually all this is inference of you all from your previous experience and you just put together and you're able to share, okay? And which memory you use more, actually? Which memory? Yeah. What you say? This one, right? What you say? Right? Because this you only do like twice per semester, right? Your teacher have memory. How do you how do you prepare the midterm exam? How do you usually prepare? How do you prepare exam? How do you study? Flash car. Use flash car. Okay. So you drive flash car and then you look at and then you recall and then right? Okay. How do you how do you prepare for exam? I'm studying. How? Using the information I know, I guess. Mm-hmm. You you read or you write? Read. You read. And then you put in the flash car. Any other way? Any other good strategy? How do you do? Huh? How do you study? By writing. By writing. How much you write? Okay. They are how do you study your exam? They are? They are? They are? They are. Okay. How do you study your exam? Huh? You read? You read? Okay. How do you study your exam? Huh? Okay. How do you study your exam? Uh, a lot of times I rewrite the notes. Rewrite the notes? 
Do you think that's effective? It has done. Right? It takes time, but it's very effective, right? How do you do, Brendan? I have a pretty good memory. Huh? I have a good memory. You have a good memory? I'm so jealous. How, how, how soon for you to remember? Um, well, usually I go through my photos and I kind of just like and then you remember. Yeah. Wow. Well, see? That is the uh, once a life, once, you know, not everybody have that good memory, but that is very good. Yeah, for me, I rewrite. You know, I find actually, I really think my hand. Because if I open the book, especially English, when I'm new here, I don't think I remember, I know everything. So I start to write. And then when I start to write, my mind starts to open. And I find that when I write, I'm not only remember, understand and I remember. So then I write the notes and then when I, the second time I have to study, I bring a piece of paper and then rewrite. And then of course I, I can write less, less, less. So before the exam, I, oh, I, I get my another paper and then write outline. So when I get into the exam, I'm, I'm ready to go. Right? And so I really, especially when I start to memorize it in English, I use my head a lot. I use my hand a lot. And so you can see everybody has different way. But no matter what way you do, you are trying to do this part. It's intentionally explicit, right? But then actually in our life, you know, you cannot face everything like exam. That would be too stressful, right? So just walk out and then you will be so surprised. You know so much. You know so much. Okay, now. When we teacher major you, right, or people major you, how much you remember? Unfortunately, we use memory as a criteria for your learning. It is somehow unfair, right? But then we use memory to measure how much you remember. You, you are learning. As everybody still remember Edward Tolman, what he say? Edward Tolman from last chapter. What's his term? Start with L. Late learning. Late learning. So he said, just because you we don't sh you don't show your remember stuff, it's not mean you are not learning, right? So it's true, but then still, you know, we, we use that. So we have different way to test your memory. First is called recall. Recall is the ability to retreat and produce from memory previously in, encountered in material. We didn't give you any clue. We just asked you, like A says, right? Please tell me the first three psychologists in modern science, right? And then you need to write them, and you need to write what they say. That's called recall. Okay, anybody remember who is the three early psychologists we talk about in this, chapter, in this, in this class? Freud. 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 Yeah. Um. William James, right? Freud, William James, and then not the not the William Wound is another one. Who from the structuralism? Who is that? Kitchener, right? It's called Kitchener, mm -hmm. right? 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 Those three, right? And so if if I give you the question like this, I just open. I just have one question, and you have to write the whole thing. That's called recall. How many of you write this kind of exam? You are pretty good with aces. No? No? Even you, you don't like those kind of exams? I don't like writing. Huh? I don't like writing. You don't like, you like to recognize. Yeah. You ask me, I can tell you A or B or C or D, right? Okay. And really nobody, actually in now day we do more like recognition. 
right? Because that's easier for teacher to grade <laughs> that way. Okay, but in my time, in my schooling in Taiwan, in college, we do a lot of recall. We do a lot of recall. Okay, so the one you like it, called recognition. Called recognition. So we give you the information. We ask you to identify. Right? We give you, tell you which one of following, you know, is the first one establish the lack. Right? And I say, you know, William Wong, you know, and I say Freud, and then I say, you know, Tichner, and I say William Jim. So answer is what? It's A. Right? That's called recognition. Okay. But sometimes students tend to less worry or start it less harder if they know the exam is recognition. They kind of say, well, I can just look at, well, it so be there, I just need to pick one. How many of you actually, not as fortunate as other people, every time when you choose, you choose a wrong answer? Right? Sometimes, especially the subject you are not familiar, very easy to choose the wrong answer. Or one of my professors, I'm not sure he said the truth or not. He said when he took the entrance examination for college, he used his pencil, he write A, B, C, D, and he just <laughs> turned his pencil and then he got all the answer correct, he got into college. I don't know if it's true or not, right? But anyway, that's called recognition. So multiple choice question, and what, kind, what other type of test is recognition? Multiple choice and what? Match. Right, match, right? How about filling the blank? That's what? Recall. That's recall. It's not a big recall, it's small recall, right? And I remember when I learned English in middle school, my our one of one part of English exam will be recall, like the teacher give you a sentence. And then the middle word, you need a film blank, they give you the first letter and the last letter, and you need to recall what is the words for that. That's also called recall, right? Okay. Okay. And another way. Okay. Another way. So this actually, these two is implicit. These two is implicit, uh, no, explicit, explicit, intentionally. Recall and recognition that it's intentionally, intentionally major you. You know you are under major. You know you have to recall something. You know you have to recognize something because your teacher is, is testing you. Okay, now we can also major memory by priming. Priming, okay, priming, it means it's, it's unconscious, it's not intentional, okay? So for example, you know, if you see the words called, what is words called? What's it is? Tour, right? Okay, and then later, if I say all oh, you, then you will tend to say tour. You will say, tend to say Okay, because I just showed you the words before. So if I want to remember, I want to know, do you know the words, then I show words, and then next time when I say, oh you, you will say two. But then I can also show other words, and then you will tend to say whatever I just say to you. Okay, so you may find yourself this semester, when you talk to your friend, you talk to them more like the subject you are taking right now, right? But the next semester when you are learning something else, then your, your topic, your conversation with your friend will be very different, right? And that because that's called priming, priming, okay? So the definition is a person read or listen to information and is later test to see where the information affect performance on another type of test. For example, person is showing a word, person is later show a part of words, and person is asked to complete the 
Friedman and is more likely to do so with the word show early. With the word show early. Okay. And then, you know, you may find that when you learn some a new words, then you will start to use the words in everywhere. That's priming. Okay. Another one, another one is called relearning. That's also a good way to memorize the stuff is relearn. Like Hunter said, he rewrite a note. He rewrite a note. When you rewrite a note, you are relearning. Okay. Or, you know, if you are one subject you don't do good, and then maybe you you got a D and you don't like that grade, then you come back to retake that class. Then you may find, oh, it's so easy. Well, I don't understand that time. It's not hard at all. Okay, and that's called relearning. Does anybody have any experience in your lab time? You relearn something. You relearn something, and now that is it. You relearn, yeah, like what? Um, last year I took AP Psych. Huh? Last year I took AP Psych. Okay, something. and then what experience? Is it good or is it positive or negative? It was easy. Right. Back here again. right. And then, I, I know a lot of you already have a psychology class in high school, right? Some of you? You do, right? So for now, when you see here, do you feel it's pretty easy, right? Because it's relearn. It's relearn, right? So actually, uh, relearn is not bad. So actually, my, I, I don't want to say my suggestion, but if something happened in your learning process, and you find some subject you don't really get that in that time, maybe when you get a little bit older, go back to relearn it. Gain your confidence. And you may find you become so beneficial. When it becomes so beneficial. Okay, so they relearn it. Okay, so before we get here, what is a two way we measure explicitly? Way, which two way? We major intentionally. What's two way? Recall and recognition. And we call that explicit. What's a two way? I don't want to show this. Go, go, go. Okay, what's a two way? No, no, don't do. What's two way? Actually, you measure the memory implicitly way. Priming and relearning. Okay, and which one of these four, I know, maybe recognition of one your favor. What is your second favor? Anybody consider relearning? Okay, anybody consider recall? Huh? You have to recall, <laughs> right? Like, when you have those oral communication class, you need to give a speech. Right? Then you don't like it? Yeah, I remember. You don't like it? What happened? Um, I think it's worse if you have to record yourself and watch it from class. <laughs> yeah. And you also need to remember what you write. Yeah. Right? You have to remember. But actually, you don't have to remember because that's your own talking. You can switch a little bit. Right? How do you remember the song? We have a musician here. How do you remember the song? You write all the song with so many words. How do you remember? Huh? There's so many times. Okay, and you never forget the words, really. And you never, Tara, when you sing the song, you never forget the the lyric. You never. Yeah. Really? Because what you remember is a story. So then, when you say sing. Wow, I never, you know, I, I, I learned things since very young. I never remember those numbers. So every time when I'm on the stage, I perform totally different. <laughs> and even now, even, you know, in my school, we have a, you know, sometimes they, they need a performer and I say, okay, I can do it. So I, I, I try to do something at home and then come out my, 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 my number. But when I'm on the stage, it's a total different story. But nobody knows, you know. So I'm not really good with that 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 part. So I always envy 
people may be very good with that. Okay, now we have five minutes, and this is about brand. You want me to save this for the next time? Yes. Save for next time? Yeah. Okay, so we have class on Monday. Okay, we have class on Monday. Okay, so now we have five minutes. Anybody like to share with me what did you learn about memory? Anybody? Don't pretend. <laughs> okay, can I recall you? Okay, if, if you don't want me to recall you, let me know, okay? Yes, what did you learn? Okay, and what's the difference? Uh huh. Very good. Who won't be my next? So I can go to you. And you are okay for me to recall you, right? Okay. Very good. Uh, am I doing primary or recall need now? I have you guys recall, right? Not recording, recording. Can I go to you now, Brendan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You should thank your parents, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who want to do next? So I can go to you. Yes? Good. And then I learned you are very young. You don't even born at that time yet, right? Okay, who would like to be my next? Who? Who? Looks like I'm facing you. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Who would like to be my next? Anybody? I'd like to see the hand. How about you? What, what do you remember? Uh, I don't know what's the difference between uh, implicit and uh, explicit. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, great. Who will be the next? Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> um, I learned how to measure memory using the flaw recognition machine. Mm, good. Hunter, are you ready? You ready? Oh, sure. Seriously. <laughs> okay. What do you remember? Okay. Are you ready? I'm next to you. Are you ready? Okay, then tell me, what did you learn? Uh-huh. Okay, can you say it louder? Yes. Okay, how about you? I learned that all the challenges are really good to Yeah, okay. Then, let me see. I go to Dale. Dale, are you ready for me? Okay. Uh, I can learn a lot more about what like, a flashbulb memory is. Yeah. How it's uh, something like that's unusual, shocking, or tragic, and it's kind of like sticks in your head. Yeah. Really mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't think I have a. Do I have you yet? Do I have you yet? Do I have you? Do I dream ask you yet? Okay. Then I don't have you. Are you ready for me? You don't? Are you okay for me to go there or not? Huh? Okay, so yes or no? Okay. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Okay, can I have you conclude? Karen? Hello? Can I have you conclude the class? Oh, yeah. My bad, y'all. I wasn't here this morning, but I'm here now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, be good. Enjoy the psych. We out. Yeah. And today's the teacher's day. Today is the teacher's day. So say what? Happy teacher's day. <laughs> <laughs> because we say that, you miss that. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So this is my class. we done for the day. So I see you next Monday. Okay. So everybody say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes. I have a lovely student. You can see it. Yes.